Hello everyone, this is Ishwar Kumar, Faculty of Current Affairs and Geography. Coming to my experience, I have worked with an academy, textbook.com, I am Mantra Career Point, presently working with it, and uh, Government Study Circles, which was located in Hyderabad, and UPSC, Patshala. So, coming to my experience, I have experience of more than 7 years, uh, dealing current affairs and geography, and worked with various institutes, as I discussed now. So, that is the thing about me. So, coming to this video, so in this video, I am going to discuss about Supreme Court verdict on Central Information Commission. So, here there was an article in the newspaper called the Economic Times. So, here in this newspaper, they have mentioned that, they have said that uh, CIC has the powers to constitute benches, frame regulations. So, it was said by Supreme Court of India. So, why it was came into the limelight? Because the previous times, Delhi High Court had given its verdict that Central Information Commission does not have the power to constitute benches. So, related to that, finally, Supreme Court of India had delivered its judgment that Central Information Commission can constitute benches as well as they can frame their rules and regulations. So, this is the judgment delivered by Supreme Court of India. So, related to that, we need to discuss it is a static information related to Chief Information Commissioners, Central Information Commission. So, why it was formed, when it was formed and what were the roles of CIC and also prelims questions and also mains question related to Union Public Service Commission examinations. Let us start the video. See here. So, so, why it was in the news? So, the Central Information Commission has a power to constitute and frame regulations. The Supreme Court of India has said while observing that autonomy of CIC of paramount importance for its effective functioning. So, finally, Supreme Court of India has said that Central Information Commission is an autonomous body. So, to protect its autonomy, we have to pre it from constraints. So, it can, CIC can work independently according to the need of the present situation, according to the demand of the situation. So, that is a news. So, that way it was in the news. So, coming to her, Chief, Info, uh, coming to her Central Information Commission. So, it was a statutory body. So, Central Information Commission was a statutory body. So, it was established on the lines of Right to Information Act of 2005. So, Right to Information Act, it was an act which was came into force in the year 2005. So, according to the powers given by RTA Act of 2005, Central Information Commission was established. Okay. So, coming to here, the main ambition, the main objective of establishing Central Information Commission is that to bring openness and also to curb the corruption, to bring openness in the governance of government, to bring openness in the administration. So, and also the citizens of India has the authority to know its government. So, that is why Central Information Commission was came into force and also Right to Information Act 2005 also came into force. So, coming to here, Central Information Commission, coming to here, Central Information Commission was constituted by Government of India. So, CIC has one Chief Information Commissioner and 10 Information Commissioners. So, coming to a coming to CIC body, CIC has one Chief Information Commissioner. So, C, Chief Information Commissioner and 10 Information Commissioners. So, it was the body of Central Information Commission. Then after that, how, how CIC was, Central Information Commissioner was appointed, by whom he was appointed. Here the answer is that coming to appointment. So, Chief Information Commissioner was appointed by President of India. 
Thus, President of India has complete authority in choosing CIC. Here the answer is no. Then how? So, President of India will appoint CIC on the recommendations of committee formed on the, recommendation, the recommendations of the committee. So, who are the members of committee? Here the members of committee were 1. Prime Minister of India Prime Minister of India Then one more person One more person is that Leader of Opposition of Lok Sabha Leader of Opposition of Lok Sabha Then one more person Union Minister Then one more person Union Minister Nominated by Prime Minister of India So Union Minister Nominated by Prime Minister of India Okay, so finally, so there was a committee to recommend CIC to the president. The committee members were Prime Minister of India, Leader of Opposition of Lok Sabha and Union Minister nominated by PM of India. So this is the committee coming to here. What is the tenure? What is the tenure of Chief Information Commissioner? So coming to here, tenure, coming to here. Tenure. Tenure is five years. Tenure is five years. Or else, one more thing. And six to five years. Okay. So, tenure is five years. If a person is going to reach 65 years of age within the two years, then he need to come out of the position. So, until 65 years of age, here the tenure period is 5 years or until the age of 65 years of that particular person. If a person reaches 65 years of his age within the one year, how to step down from the position Chief Information Commissioner. So finally, here the tenure is 5 years or 65 years of his age. Then coming to powers. Coming to powers. So here the powers of CIC. Here the powers of CAC was that he can listen the appeals. So CAC can listen the appeals and also he can deliver the judgment. Why? Because CAC was a quasi judicial body. Quasi judicial body. Okay. So whatever the judgment delivered by CIC is not compulsory binding. The other part is can go to can go for the appeal as well to the courts to the courts so that's why we can say that cic is a quasi judicial body so finally the power sir cic can hear the appeals can hear the appeals complaints regarding to rti act they can hear the appeals complaints regarding to right to information act 2005 and also one more thing CIC, Chief Information Commissioner, Central Information Commission is the second appellate body. Is the second appellate body. Then who is the first appellate body? And who is the PIO? See here. For example, if you need information, for example, a citizen of India, if he needs any information that are related to public, that was in the public domain and also related to public, or else the information related to the Funds released by government of India or else any government of entity. So then he need to approach the concerned public information officer of the particular office. So he is the first person authorized to provide information to the citizens. Okay. Then after that, if public information officer fails to provide information within the 30 days of period, within the 30 days of period, then the same citizen can file a first appeal, can file a first appeal to the higher authority, can you file first appeal to higher authority. And if the same first appellate fails to provide the information within 90 days of time frame, then the concerned citizen can approach to the Central Information Commissioner under second appellate. So that's why Chief Information Commissioner or else CIC is a second appellate body. So that's why we call it as, that's why it is a one of the power of CIC. So come in, if you want example, I can give you here. See, if you take revenue department, 
as an example here if for example if you need any information related to any land document we have to approach nearby tahsildar officer tahsildar office in that office deputy tahsildar is the pio deputy tahsildar is the public information officer so we have to give the letter to him we have to give the letter to him that we need the information related to these aspects so here deputy tahsildar is the concerned pio if pio or his deputy tahsildar fails to provide the information within the 30 days we can file appeal to sub collector of concerned district sub collector of concerned area and again if sub collector fails to provide the information then we can directly approach the then we can directly approach the state information commission at the state level or else chief information commission at the state at the central level so it is a criteria and also these are the powers and coming to here coming to here significance of coming to here significance so it means the importance of central information commission or else chief information commissioner so one thing is that it was established to bring transparency one thing is that it was established to bring transparency to bring transparency where in the function of, of government the functioning of government of india or also state governments okay and also state governments to bring the transparency at the central level in government of india and also the working process of government of india and also to make all the officials of state and central governments accountable to the actions done by them accountable to the actions done by them so finally significance of cic is that to bring transparency to bring accountability and also to bring responsibility and also to bring responsibility to bring responsibility here the responsibility is to bring among the citizens how how means see a person in fundamental duties we might have read that citizens of india has to protect their heritage protect their resources so in that aspect we have the responsibility to protect our resources and everything so that's why we have the responsibility to question the actions and work done by the government of india for the betterment of india so that's why this this is the importance and after that and also rti 2005 and also cic plays the important role in curbing corruption in curbing corruptions okay so corruption at various levels so that is the significance of cic so finally to bring transparency in the working of both governments accountability among the officers and also responsibility in the public and also a main thing is to curb the corruption at various levels in government departments so this is the significance of central information commission so coming to here one important question that i want to discuss with you that related to prelims there the question is that consider the following statements regarding central information commission cic one first statement chief information commissioner was appointed by the president of india under the recommendations of speaker and pm so it is a one of the statement we have to know that whether it was correct or false true or false second one central information commission is a quasi judicial body true or false third one cic works under right to act 2005 so which of the statements given above is are correct so here the options are a only one statement is true b only two statements are true c only three statements are true d none of the above so if you know the answer please put your answer in the comment box if not of course we will explain i am going to explain this answer to you guys so right so if you have seen the video without any skipping you might have answered this question correctly that's the thing so let us explain this question let me explain this question 
See coming to here that Chief Information Commissioner was appointed by President of India. Up to here it was correct. Under, under the recommendations speaker and PM, is it true? It was a false. So what is the right answer here? So on the recommendations of Prime Minister of India, Leader of Opposition, LOP and also Union Minister nominated by Prime Minister of India. So it is the committee which recommends about Chief Information Commissioner appointment. So definitely one is failure. Second one. Second, Central Information Commission is a quasi-judicial body. Is it true or false? Definitely, it is a true. Because I said, it is a quasi-judicial body. Means, CIC can deliver judgment and deliver judgment. But, the judgments delivered by CIC is not complete binding. The person, aggrieved persons can approach to the high courts and supreme courts according to their convenience. Next after that. So that's why second option is a true. So two is a true. Third one. CIC works under Right to Information Act 2005. Definitely it is a true. Why? Because Right to Information Act 2005 is the main reason behind the establishment of Central Information Commission as well as Chief Information commissioners and 10 information commissioners as well as state information commission as well as state chief information commissioners so that's why third is also true so here upsc is recently following new trend that this is the new trend so what we have to find how many statements are true so here one to false two three and true so that's why two statements are true two statements are so finally, what might be the answer? B is the answer. So only two statements are true. So before the times, before the times, we have the choice of elimination. But UPSC has changing, bringing innovative methods in questioning. This is a new trend that was followed by UPSC since two years. Since two years. So that's why we have to face the challenges. How to adapt to the innovation by UPSC board. So that's the important thing. So finally, B is the right answer for this question. And one more question, mains question. So you have to write this question and you can upload this answer in our telegram channels. So we will evaluate your answers. So here the question is that the CIC Central Information Commission is the highest appellate body under the right to act or right to information act. However, it has its own limitations in this context. Discuss the powers and functions of the CIC. So try to write the answer within 150 words and submit this answer to us. Post this, you can post this answer in our telegram channel. We have given access to everyone so that we will evaluate your answer and also we will provide model answers as well. That is the information. So please follow our YouTube channel regularly without fail. Without fail, please follow our YouTube channel and subscribe. Thank you so much. And this is Ishwar Kumar, faculty of current affairs and geography. Thank you.